typing though. No, oh, that's because I have a, I have a insane mechanical keyboard now. So there's no no escape. Why? Why do you do these things to yourself? I I don't know. Like my my uh, well because Lenovo ruined this thing. Like like this okay. keyboard the nipple used to be keyboard. perfect. I yeah. I forced everyone to get the nipple keyboard in our lab. You know when we had the whole like oh everyone wants a mechanical keyboard. No, everyone gets one of these guys. Yeah, definitely because... shouldn't say it like that. Why? Anyways, continue forcing people to get nipple keyboards. Well, yeah, that is kind of weird. But um, because of this, like having the mouse right there under your 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 um, space bar is amazing. Right? Have you ever like, thought of a not having a mouse? Just don't use the mouse, oh, man. It's not. That's the only you're living, way to live. You're living. It's it's like not talking to a computer in native in native English. It's it's like yeah, an obsolete. That thing. is the way to go. No, 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 no. <laughs> you Siri dictate everything? No, because Siri's garbage. But will you when it's hooked up to yeah. Whisper and all well, these large you know, language it models? It turns out if you if you unleash a long enough stream of profanity, Siri actually doesn't tell you that that was very rude. It actually. Oh, <laughs> it's too long for her context window, so <laughs> <Exactly>. she just. <laughs> Exactly. Oh um, man. Anyways, my my keyboard started. I don't know the new version of them. The, the these version two, they're not so good. Um, and and well, at least with Linux, for various various reasons, I could go on for a very long time. Um, but uh, what I ended up doing was trying to replace it with another keyboard. So I went with. I need a low profile keyboard. I've, I've been typing on laptop keyboards for ever since college started, right? Which is a, a, a horrifyingly long time ago. And so uh, I need the low profile keyboard. I can't have this, this these big keycaps. It's just- Do you actually mm -hmm. notice this travel? Like I've heard people talk about that, but like, I don't know, from using a, uh, it's just the Mac keys to like a normal keyboard. Like I just don't notice. Like after five minutes, you're just typing. No? I don't know, man. I, just, I don't type. I, I, what do you I do? Are you symphoning? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you're not a freaking artist over there. You're just literally moving your fingers a few millimeters at a time. The question is know, how man. many millimeters you have to move your hands down. Exactly. And that, 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 that varies. That's very... So, the point is okay. that uh, I ended up getting one mechanical keyboard that was low profile it was still too too high I did, it, it just it's no good because it's not just actually the the size of the keycaps it's also like you know the the island style of like this guy where there's islands with like little moats around them right absolutely I mean, no idea what that means what well you, look this is is okay. one style right and let me okay. show you one well, is the time. podcast it's like audio uh as well so oh you're right that's a good point so right, describe the island keycaps. So, so the island are... keys keycaps are like what you see on a MacBook or mm -hmm. on a ThinkPad, where they're like square caps, and and between the caps, there's like plastic that's, okay. that's or whatever uh, aluminum or whatever fancy stuff. Your your fiber carbon carbon fiber, um, which is what spaceships are made out of. Fiber is probably is what... made out of carbon, but anyways. The anyways, most the uh, um, so so. Th there, the keys are have like the separation, whereas on a typical keyboard, okay. uh, there's just air between the keys, and, oh. and that makes a difference. And anyways, Why? I, I, I don't know. It just does. <laughs> it just does, man. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a key keyboardologist, typologist. Um, I don't know, you just find one keyboard and just use it for the rest of your life. And I feel like that's it's what not I was trying you... to do. And then Lenovo ruined it. And I, you know, you can only buy, buy the old ones. Yeah, I probably should because I was thinking, oh, but it's not wireless. Um, and I want it's the for wireless, desktops. But... Who yeah, cares? Yeah. And I don't use the wire because the wireless features don't really work very well with Linux. Yes, we I saw mean... that it took what the viewers didn't, and listeners didn't see was the 10 minutes it took you to set up Bluetooth audio into your airpods that you're wearing right now yeah well then, they'll see it part way through the episode where this one runs out of batteries <laughs> and i try to switch to the other one and then we lose connection we have to spend 10 minutes but it's it's all worth it to have the luxury of running linux on your desktop you know somebody's uh, got to take that hit yeah and it's it's and it's gonna be me you can't have free um, software if nobody runs the free software that's right all right anyways uh, let's talk about uh, uh, CTF CTFs. Radio. Yeah, and CTF. So, so we're back. We're back. Uh, we're back for season three. <laughs> yeah, let's not do seasons. I feel like that was a mistake. <laughs> we'll just release episodes when we want to release yeah. episodes. I feel like yeah. that's the way to go. That's right. So uh, uh, we had a uh, previous episode 
Mm -hmm. that aired a while back. Mm -hmm. Then we had an episode after Qualls a year ago that we recorded, and it was awesome. But unfortunately, during the recording of this episode, an entire bottle of whiskey uh, I don't know. was consumed. And before. But and before. We, that's but that's right. what that led to the halfway. it led to the recording of it was the drinking of the whiskey and then it was the yeah. finishing of the whiskey and then going into I think other bottles of things yeah. that uh So that episode's probably unreleasable. But uh That's what it, I kept saying, but uh you know, yeah. somebody keeps trying to convince me that it's definitely So the... we've been going back and forth. Latest uh plan is maybe uh may, we could do private viewings at DEF CON. Yeah, I mean, we we can technically <laughs> we do, do anything we want. Yeah, I I think of uh, what the people want and what we want could be separate things. Yeah, so anyways, I think that though that episode was absolutely amazing, it kind of put a, a, a pause on things because we're like, well, we have all this stuff. It's silly to record another episode before sure. releasing the previous one. And there's, uh, but now, uh, of course, what occasioned this is qualifying for DEF CON. Hey, because it's 2023, uh, it was the second year of uh, Nautilus Institute hosting uh, DEF CON. So they just had it in, uh, what was it? It was in um, May, the uh, end of May. What is it? Yep. May 26th, that weekend. Uh, it was an insane 48-hour competition. Uh, our friends at Nautilus Institute, who, if you had watched our previous previous episode uh interviewing uh legit bs history uh you might know that those are some of the same folks that are running the nautilus institute yeah that's right um it's it's an interesting um interesting group of people that that really uh answered the call again which is insane to me right because organizing uh ctf is is quite something in fact oh, yeah. i, I Probably one of the reasons that CTF Radio took a hiatus is we needed to rest after we needed time away from CTF after organizing, and then we're like, okay, now we can come back. And then there was the bottle of whiskey, and then <laughs> but now I think we can. Really... And then after our year long hangover from that one night, now we're back at it. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot. Um, when we were deciding to to organize us, oh, oh, I remember Giovanni called me up. And he's like, yeah, what are you doing? This is going to be absolutely insane. And if you do a good job, people say, of course you did a good job. It's the fucking finals of, 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 uh, of DEF CON, the world championship of hacking. And if you don't do a good job, people will be very upset at you. Yeah, um, turns out that's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And, and we've been on both sides of, of, of that. <laughs> well, now lot. it's a lot better because now I just don't care because, hey, you know what? Yeah. It's hard, so people mistakes will happen. And I've seen it again even at, you know, playing in a lot of CTFs in this last year. It's like, yeah, stuff will happen and stuff will break. And I was like, oh, man, if we did that stuff at uh, <laughs> during DEF CON quals or finals, we get ripped to shreds. But, you know, because yeah. the normal CTF people are more much more understanding. Yeah, yeah, it, it gets it gets kind of crazy. Um, but it's it's very interesting coming out the other end as as a, an individual because you know we were do you a collective before and now you're just an individual yawn. You used <laughs> to be many yawns and now you're just one yawn. Only one yawn made it out. <laughs> Actually, that's probably true. I think I murdered. I think I murdered several yawns in the uh, OOO dates. <laughs> exactly. No, it's it's a uh, it's interesting because there's a lot of times you know you, you go up and it's like some crazy you know crazy pre high stress presentation or very important like i don't know like like uh, a keynote at a conference or you're running a a, a, a training workshop and mm -hmm. then there's this all this stress but then for a lot of it you, you can just sit back and like well it's not the fucking world championship of fucking hacking and we've gone into that with our pants down and, uh, you know, this is, uh, we're, we're, we're adequately prepared. Yeah. Things might not be perfect, whatever. Boom. Just it's it's very it. cool. That's what we learned. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a very useful, probably one of the most useful skills that, that we've gotten out of hosting, at least, you know, me personally. I mean, and then uh, it's just to not care about things or like, no, in just kind of to, they... yeah, the perspective. That that you know it's it's 
nothing it, it, you're never gonna be perfectly prepared it's fine and then uh kind of the other perspective is that any preparation is going to be a complete shit show <laughs> But I think it's also you learn to trust yourself. I mean, through those things, it's like yeah. we know whatever weird circumstances is going to come our way. Like we can't, you know, as prepare as much as you can. We can't uh, identify all possible bad things that are going to happen during the competition. And so you have to be ready and willing to just like make decisions and go in random directions. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a. Uh, I like to think of there's a specific Star Trek Next Generation episode where. Uh, Picard and Dr. Crusher, they get stranded on uh, some planet and uh, they they get mind linked somehow. I don't remember. Uh, and and Crusher says, oh, which way do we go? And Picard says, we go this way. Very confidently, he just goes out walking and says, wait, you have no idea because she, she's mind linked with it. Mm -hmm. just, and he's like, yeah, but right. we need a direction. People need to be certain about the direction. <laughs> The point is choosing the direction, not choosing the exactly. best possible direction among all possible directions. Exactly. Yeah, and that that is uh, <laughs> so DefCon. <laughs> it's like you know, okay, well, this happened. Uh, <laughs> Do you have I any mean, specific uh, examples in mind that doesn't well, we've had uh, you know, ruin our team or ruin? <laughs> that's right. Well, else? maybe we can we can poke at us for a little bit, right? Yeah. So um, there was uh, one of our kind of. Uh, Actually, this was the final challenge we launched is mm -hmm. uh, Hyper O, right? The uh, last stage of the um, our hypervisor challenge series um, at DEF CON Finals 2021. And uh, to make Hyper O happen, as you well know, Adam, you, you have to create a, a copy of our infrastructure on uh, at the time, the only way to do it to get this virtualization working properly was to have a bare metal machines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was just a complete clone of our infrastructure just for this challenge. And um, maybe two hours before the the, the final ended, um, we started running out of disk space. Oh, that's right. Right. And uh, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was insane. We had we have had these calculations going. Like, okay, that's we're going to fail. The infrastructure will shut down. We'll really run out of disk space. And there's like we were cleaning up uh, whatever uh, leftover, or, but it, but we we had some runway that we were gonna run out like maybe an hour and a half before the end, or like or, or 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 whatever, an hour before then. And so we had to make these calls, like uh, okay, there's, you know, let let's say shellfish, right? Shellfish because you know we can we can <laughs> uh, mess with our own uh, our, our, our our now uh, again team uh, easily would uh, say okay shellfish hasn't really been doing much on this challenge hasn't been doing anything and they're also like in you know not not very very high place so if the show must go on and we have to sacrifice someone <laughs> we're going to delete their image <laughs> and to cl clear space we have to start cannibal you know and, and and i don't actually think this ended up being necessary i don't remember i think we, we figured out some way to save but whatever um but uh i bet it was sean that came up with something clever that's my yeah. guess yeah um but you know we were in a in a situation where we very much could have had a hyper o completely explode um and we would have had to make make choices and and you can't just sit there second guessing yourself etc cetera, etc cetera. you say okay you know sorry guys uh but um and yeah, i think that, that um was, I think actually, well, Star Trek Next Gen is pretty good uh, metaphor for at least how we did leadership in OOO. It was not just Jan saying we're doing this and everybody just blindly follows him. It was a, hey, what about this? We talk about it, but then when we decide on a direction, we just have to go with it. And we yeah. can't like go back and relitigate yeah. why we're doing things. It's like, no, unless the situation greatly changes. But yeah, it's about like seeing what consensus, what we can do. And then it's like, all right, well, let's go in this direction, and then we do it. And <laughs> there are also costs to this model. In the Cyber Grand Challenge, um, at one point, uh, we had a team meeting to decide a patching strategy, and uh, we uh, got consensus on we always patch all the bugs that we find. Yeah. So to, to catch re uh, listeners up who um, might not be familiar with the Cyber Grand Challenge, it was a fully 
automated hacking competition run by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency in 2016, in which uh, basically air-gapped systems with no human intervention wage cyber warfare against each other. Um, sounds very cool, and one of the the it was very cool. One of the steps of that was fixing vulnerabilities that you find in your own system that your mm -hmm. your systems find in um, the services that they need to keep running. Um, and there were there was scoring in implications on on how you did things and how we decided to do things is uh, we immediately on every uh, uh, program that we need to maintain the security of we rewrite the the, the binary to make sure that, uh, to, to harden it, to mm -hmm. uh, retrofit mitigations like uh, address space layout randomization. We, we implemented that for the decree operating system, um, various things like that. Um, and we decided to just do that all the time because eventually someone will find a bug in it, someone will start exploiting it, and these mitigations will help. That actually cost us, uh, depending on other decisions we could have taken, several uh, position. So we had a uh, this scrap not, article. You you ended up third place. So there's not many positions yes. that you could. It, it it cost us up to two positions depending on different uh, decisions that that could have been taken. Um, but uh, you know, once we we took it, we pushed on, and and you know, in that case, it was uh, the wrong choice. In other cases, these things are the right choice, right? So it's yep. um, it's it's very interesting. Part of team dynamics, um, and actually, this maybe gets us uh, meanderingly close to to what we want us to talk about what? in this episode. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> is uh, is is teaming and teams mm -hmm. and 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 uh, the the team aspect of the CTF community. Um, I was uh, just pitching to you, Adam, um, for the next couple of episodes that maybe we. Uh, go and, and, and invite other teams um, and interview team by team like we did for not or for legit BS. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we did uh, an episode with PPP as well. And an episode with Shellfish. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe we leave PPP and Shellfish toward the end because we don't have that many weeks until um, uh, DEF CON finals. And it'd be mm -hmm. awesome to get through a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, views into into different teams that that are willing to talk to mm -hmm. us that would be awesome um the question is what do we do about I think this is a great question um cts had a great uh tweet that i'll link to about the real ctf skill is mergers and acquisitions with the graph of all of the the teams so do you do a breadth first do you just do the merge teams do you do the separate teams uh and i guess it's kind of leading to be uh, you know what do you you know, since we're talking about teaming, what is a team in CTF? That's that's a, a, an interesting question. Um, I mean, you know, as as that so CTS now maintains that uh, repository with all of the the team relationships, and uh, you know, out of the teams, even playing quals, and mm -hmm. this is not even counting post qual mergers and so forth. Uh, most, I, I think, out of the twelve that 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 uh, qualified 10 or 11 were uh, uh, mergers of teams, mm -hmm. which is which is pretty wild. Um, I don't know how to handle that on on in terms of talking with people, right? I, when we talked uh, to PPP, I think that was, um, I mean, PPP is an interesting case, right? Because mm -hmm. MMM is a merger of uh, a bunch of, Three teams, uh, right? Yeah, was, three teams. Yeah, uh, yeah the the PPP, what are the they? duck, and Canadian maple bacon, right? Maple bacon. That that was there. Yeah, I kept trying to come up with what was the M name. Uh, I, I kept coming up with Mighty Ducks, but I was thinking of your uh, the what you said the the ducks. Yeah, um, and and even for quals, they played as Parliament of Ducks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it was and, PPP and the duck merged. Yeah, um, and so. You know, if you're talking about a team that that has won so many DEFCONs, um, and the uh, uh, way that the the sport, if you want to call it a sport, or the game, if you want to call it a game, or the way of life is proceeding, is is uh, pretty difficult to to keep up with, right? Do you think that's a natural? I mean, it's it's definitely like teams have merged. We've seen this a long time. I mean, I think I even remember. 
seeing this with the, some of the the Russian teams like LCBC and mm-hmm. uh, those kinds of things. But that was less where people kind of, I don't know, talked about it and it happened less frequently. Do you think that's a... Because I think one of the things that's, that was different this year in uh, DEF CON Quals than in the past was that there's only... Uh, 12 teams that were invited to finals instead of let's say 16 teams or that one stupid year where we had 24 teams which is too many teams uh but so do you think that's a like is it a cause and effect thing is it the reverse because i think teams were already starting to merge and i think a lot of it's just natural right i don't think it should be like a um i don't know i don't I'm not as cynical. I think it's very clear that like, you know, people go start their own teams and then kind of merge back together, even though they were with one team, like it's mm-hmm. kind of a natural thing in some sense. So I think if, if you look at, I think there's a couple of things going on. One is if you look at what happens and, and I'm, I have very little understanding of the NBA, but what, what I see as happening in the NBA is that you couldn't just this start. Is fasc- a... This is going to be fascinating. Go, go ahead, Jan. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You couldn't just start like a, a, a like you know little town team and then compete in the NBA for many reasons, but but also because the acquisition of that level of talent requires massive resources unavailable to to small teams. I think we have a less developed analog of that in CTF where. You've heard it here for yeah. first, folks. Jan claiming CTF is just like the NBA. So, <laughs> Brooke and I have had these. these oh no! Uh, these these uh, discussions, uh, especially earlier in our relationship, where it'd be like, "Why are you always gone for June and July, and like the first week of August? Like, like mm-hmm. why are you it's just you just check out of everything?" Yeah. As as while we were preparing for DefCon, and it's like, well. well you know, why? What? Why? What's the point? And and how many uh, millions of dollars is your contract to play exactly, for shellfish? Exactly. That's <laughs> a uh, yeah. Because this was before organizing. Even now, organizer kind of makes sense that hey, we're out this world state, blah, 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 but but it is just just playing, and we mm-hmm. still disappear. And, and shellfish has a has a history of, and this could be a whole other episode of of over preparing, um, <laughs> and, and and you know uh, spending entire summers working on infrastructure that that just absolutely gets destroyed by the reality of of uh of whatever um of the of the actual competition but um you know i, I when we say hey this is the world championship you know you wouldn't say hey why is uh i don't know some let, let's not say lebron or something but like a minor NBA person, why are they training the whole, you know, three weeks before the World Series or whatever, right? Um, and uh, uh, it, it, she said, "This is not NBA. <laughs> this is some, <laughs> a bunch of nerds, <laughs> you know." Dude, that, you know, and, and she didn't say it meanly, of course, but um, but but uh, well, not too meanly because you married her. But yeah, exactly. Well, and now I, I think we have reached an understanding on the importance of DEF CON. <laughs> to the or point a, where... Or a stalemate, whatever. Yeah, or, or a stalemate. <laughs> so the point where there wasn't like... I mean, now... I mean, that that was back when we were like, you know, mm-hmm. completely free. Now we have two kids and uh, Brooke took on the... the uh, like, qual- DEF CON Quals was, was insane because that was three days without... Uh, with her doing the full childcare with both kids and everything. Um, and it wasn't even like, you'll pay me back later. It's like, okay, DEF CON's important, you know. Maybe what you did very smartly was show her how horrible it could get by hosting for four years. That's right. Yeah. And now when you go back to just playing, it's like, well, you're not hosting anymore. So this is way better. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's just, it's just, that's this weekend. It's not like, you know. A a, month and a half beforehand. A a month and a half of just completely being absent. But then six months of Qual's finals one two stress. punch of, of, yeah. of complete stress. Oh my god! Exactly. Yeah, but um, anyways, we were talking about oh why these these uh, these mergers mm-hmm. happen. Um, well, your I, NBA so example I, is terrible, by the way. So the professional organizations <laughs> like limit the number of teams that are in the. You can't just start an NBA team. Like you have to be invited into the league. Oh really? Correct. 
Oh, that seems not very cool. I think in the UK with soccer you could do this because they have those tier systems. So you could just create a club at the low level and then yeah. you and then win fight that up. level and go up. Yeah, the NBA is not like that. Not at all. I had no idea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's why I'm here. <laughs> I see. <laughs> it, but anyways, that's crazy. Okay, so that's like a... Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, a monopoly uh, for sure. They and they literally do. They anyways, it's like a whole thing. But yes, they they limit the number of teams. It's for a lot of reasons. They share the revenue from the you know rights to streaming amongst all the teams, and they have limits on how many how much. I don't know. I, I, the NBA I don't know as much as, but like NFL, they have limits of how much you can play pay your players. So you can't just buy all the good players, and they have minimum limits that you can spend on your team. So you can't just like get garbage people to save money basically so that's like oh. they're protecting the league in several ways um i was actually talking about the nfl okay you talk <laughs> about lebron james who's a basketball player uh, this is why i was oh. confused <laughs> so you were talking about the nba yeah I was talking that's about the one where they put okay, the hoop, they like shoot it in through the air so like I, it's I, like I, for tall I people play, i used to play basketball in high school i, I almost I, almost got a basket once it ricocheted and it was it was really close you it, have a hoop at your new house we should get it fixed and maybe true. we can get you that basket I feel, I, yeah, i'll lift you back, up to the <laughs> exactly but i also won very recently a game of horse no no uh, the other one the one where you go around around the world oh wow. against who yeah Against my high school friends. Wow. It was awesome. It, took, it was so embarrassing. Yeah, we they're all like, to... who? What? What is this? <laughs> oh, my God, man. We were all, we all, you know, okay, we're hot shots. We used to, we used to throw some hoops or whatever. And, uh, not, well, anyways. And then it, it was embarrassing. No one could, no one could, uh, like, lob it. And it was, it was, I think I won and my <laughs> eight-year-old uh, nephew got second place. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing, and then man. my high school friends were like at the beginning. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Uh, okay, so oh. teams merging and... Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I think in in, uh, in cybersecurity, we have something a little different where uh, there's... I think in, in basketball or whatever, in sports, the sports themselves are what makes people their living, right? Mm -hmm. So, you yeah, know... The professional, I mean... Many. Exactly. And this doesn't really exist in CTF. It, it Not even to the uh, extent that it exists in, I don't know, Smash Brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Like a video game where, you know, you have you have a couple of people who whose living is uh, Smash Brothers. It doesn't support a lot of people, um, at least not Smash. But, but um, in CTF, I, I don't think there's really, I mean... You could probably do it like Juhat at his height could probably have done it with just tournament winnings to have some mm, like a semi reasonable living. But I think it would have been way less than a normal security job because those pay so much, right? <laughs> right or, exactly. or, or, you know, being good at, at bug hunting, right? I, I mean, Juhat's a good example of that. Maybe the sports analogy would be like minor leagues or, but those are still professional, but like a rec league. Mm -hmm. Like a, you can play rec soccer, right? I mean, it costs a little bit, but nobody's paying you to do it. Mm -hmm. You could do that, you know, every weekend, but there's no, usually there's no on-ramp into then you could be a professional if yeah. you're doing this, but this is like a, Hey, there's actually a very clear path from doing CTFs to actually going out into the industry and making money, either doing, you know, pen testing, bug finding, vulnerability development, all that stuff. Right. And, and, and I think the, the key thing there is that that path leads somewhat out of CTF. CTF mm -hmm. is an incubator. Um, and so you don't have these teams that can capture individual talent, mm -hmm. right? You can't hire, you know, LeBron and then whatever his friends are. Um, and I think it's hard to just, I think the other thing is it's hard to justify, like you said, spending a bunch of weekends all the time on this stuff yeah. as you get, older and older and have let's say more out even just work outside of work responsibilities right you have other uh responsibilities so yeah 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 it kind of makes so sense i mean i was thinking about like you know thinking about shellfish 10 years ago who was doing it versus i don't know 13 years ago there's like a handful of people i guess that are still from shellfish of 10 years ago that are active and where yeah. the bulk of the people is new new people that have come come through so 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 what, what i um 
observed once, and I, I think I might have mentioned this on a prior episode, is uh, CTF players have like a, a half-life. Mm-hmm. And once people go into an actual re- real life outside of academia, outside of, of you know, some sort of like, uh, you know, there are these CTF incubator locations uh, mm-hmm. such as uh, um, ASU and UCSB are, are just two examples we're familiar with where, you know, you could go and do an internship. And, and focus mostly on CTF, and then you can go and do a, a, a graduate or, or even undergraduate, whatever. Right. And uh, um, with CTF as a primary thing there, once people go out, like there's a, there's this half life of um, you lose probably about half of the players every five years. Mm-hmm. Right? So half life of a CTF player is about five years, and uh, we see this on shellfish too, right? So. Uh, you know, we we had some uh, original players still playing, but but they're like the you know alpha particles that just kind of refuse to go away. I don't know if I'm, I'm I'm sure I've I don't know. You've been to all the way now. to basketball. Now you're to physics. Yeah. Like, sure, man, you're an expert on everything. I think that's how all professors think. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and so uh, so so that's the the. Uh, an interesting uh, uh, thing, but like what what you said, basically, you, you, players cycle out. There's not a, a crazy financial incentive to like hire like the top player. Now, there's always rumors that teams have about other teams, right? Like <laughs> about hiring. You know, people. yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's the 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 our our, our viewpoint from outside uh was that like aoe when we were playing like aoe mm-hmm. uh, ten, they, they they just hired everybody they needed to because you know they have so uh, but I, I don't think like we've interviewed aoe right? mm-hmm. uh and uh on this podcast and and that's very clearly not what happens and uh so uh, there there isn't that ability to just suck up talent into a central organization and so then you have to suck up talent by merging with other organizations and it's not necessarily actually a bad thing i think it shows the um community's regard for defcon where this happens mostly at defcon mm-hmm. right um and then it, because of um people uh, cycling out right with, with half lives you you get and this happened you know to my group of friends growing up right like we uh I had a group of friends. My little brother, who's just a little younger than me, had a group of friends. And then for sleepovers or rare events that, that uh, you know, we, we could only convince my mom to let us have very rarely. We, Which is uh, probably a good thing. Yeah, we, we, we'd end up with both groups of friends because it's such a rare event, right? Like DEFCON finals. And then over right. time, as people, you know, move away, then, you know, the, the groups coalesce. And so you have these teams that start out as mergers. Mm-hmm. And after a while, it's like, well, this is one team, right? Right, um, right, right. And then they, I, I think, uh, I'm just trying to to think of like, I'm I'm a little hesitant to name an example, and then people are like, well, you know, but that that well, we can that's say not that for when yet. we talk to the teams, right? I think yeah, that's, that's right. A, a... But I think an example uh, of a team like that, from my perspective, and and maybe be, would be interesting to uh, and and they've been since subsumed into another team. I should pull up the the graph, but eat, sleep, own, repeat, right? I saw them as a mm-hmm. uh, team, like a cohesive team in their own right, but they actually started out as multiple teams, according yeah, to so the... they're exactly they're on this graph as uh, KIT CTF and Stratum R. Uh, yeah. Two, and then there's two other ones that go into that team, and then they're now allegedly now part of Sour Sour Cloud, which is now part of which merged with organizers yeah. to be Oranga Kraut, Orga Kraut, Kraut. And and I think you know Orga Kraut is a temporary for now uh, entity for the purposes of coming to the sleepover that happens uh, very rarely, but um, organizers are a team, cohesive mm-hmm. team now. I don't think they're like, oh, yeah, they're a merger of the crown and they're... Uh, no, they're... Right, exactly. But it's organized. Right. Um, but that's just... I mean, that's, again, that's, like you said, that's kind of our opinion from the outside. I think it'd be really the, interesting uh, I mean, to yeah. to talk and see what they think about, you know, these things. 
Yeah, and, and so that, you know, makes... Uh, I think it, it, it causes some incorrect conceptions too, which is interesting. It's it's People say, okay, well, of course you won DEF CON CTF because your team is 50 people. Yeah, right? you because have 80, you merged, like, eight different 100 teams people. Together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with with Shellfish, we'd always bring all of our, it was, DEF CON was a family trip. Mm -hmm. the, the most of the time in the in in the suite it's just hanging out and and whatever and some people happen to be hacking at the time in fact we've uh well I don't know maybe if I agree with that man <laughs> but yeah, there is a lot of uh, catching up but it's also yeah. a lot of there's a lot of hacking right but yes. but but I think especially during game time after game time is much better yeah I, I think a lot of it is is uh uh so so then people say okay well hey shellfish has like a bunch of people and how you know but but anytime and we've observed this in in, in a ctf you observe this from both uh sides of the table so to say is there's a core a, a set of, of of incredible hackers that are experienced have been doing this for a while and then there's a set of hackers that are you know getting up to speed mm -hmm. that second set you can have 10 or you can have 10 million, you'll have roughly the same result. The difference right. is the future of your team. Yes, yes. Right, so it's those those are the ones that you're developing into your future top hackers as a team. And so when you have uh, these, these mega mergers, right, it's not always clear if the result is actually going to be, you know, actually operationally better. Mm -hmm. than, it, than it would have been before. I, I mean, I mean it, I, it, it tends to, but it definitely doesn't scale linearly by any, or anywhere close to that. Yeah, right? I think that's the, the interesting thing I was going to ask, which you kind of already talked about. is like, okay, well, do you have an advantage by... Like, it seems like that's the, let's say, the reaction. One way to look at it is, okay, we're limiting the number of teams that can go to the sleepover to 12. Then, So then the rational response is, okay, well, let's merge teams to have a stronger team to increase our chances to go to the sleepover is that true like do you think three teams or four teams merged are going to be better than the one team i don't know like what what do you think about that i think it can't just be uh incorrect conceptions uh, preconceptions that caused 11 of 12 teams or 10 of 12 teams to be merger teams mm -hmm. so i think that there is truth to that i think there's some some sort of like a natural selection process going on um i don't i don't think a team made out of two conglomerate teams is twice as good mm -hmm. um and, and why I, not? can you elaborate yeah, because on um because of this this effect you you have these top people that are leading the charge your your cavalry then you have uh, you know a lot of people that are still training up to get to that point mm -hmm. um when there's i think there's a danger when there's too many cavalry and maybe you could say okay well we use other ctfs to train our people but I, i'm a little skeptical about that that approach but when you have too many cavalry and we've run into this with shellfish actually and mm -hmm. like shellfish's height it became very difficult to train new people. And we started actually playing as multiple shellfishes. Right. Because um, uh, we had uh, kind of so many like top players that would snipe every challenge. And then all the, the, the newcomers would say, yeah, but what am I supposed to do? I just sit here. Right. You know, and, right. and, and, and get sniped uh, on every challenge I look at. Um, and, I think actually one reason that DEF CON or these really tough CTFs are actually better, in my opinion, for training up new people is challenges take longer to solve, mm. even the, the low hanging fruit. And so the the newcomers can actually like, you know, contribute. And oftentimes the pros get stumped. 
mm -hmm. and then newcomers are in this channel stomped along with the pros and that's a critical uh, experience in, in the modern era the, the discord channels before on the desk you know in, in you know at the desk with with people yeah, exactly and i think that's where you know there is definitely a benefit to having more people if you just think of it as like a search space right like we're trying to find the solution maybe we haven't put the right pieces together so if you have enough people that at least know what they're doing right that are searching this search space yeah. then when they strike on a path then they can kind of i don't know then i think there definitely is a benefit to having more people look at something i don't think like even if you had your whole like if you had to solve one challenge right and it's all of your team if you just have one person doing that versus 50 people i think i don't know i guess if the one person is uh geo hot or loki heart or whatever maybe they'll beat them every time but i think there's a lot of times that the 50 would win just because of like the one person just happens to go in one bad direction yes. and that costs them time and like you know from a time and speed perspective yeah it's definitely not that there's no benefit like i mean there's a reason why we're seeing all these these murders um but but I think the benefit isn't so clear. And I, I do. I, I think there's a long term cost to to uh, to teams. Um, definitely. There's also a difference between quals and finals. I think mm -hmm. with a t attack defense ETF with very few challenges, uh, the cost of like the, the, the loss of efficiency to organizational uh, friction and, and, and overhead it just gets makes things very untenable very quickly. Mm -hmm. I think, for example, you know, like a, a, almost any team, unless you have, and then the here we go into like rumors is that you know it, the year Samurai won, they had like eighty people or however many that that were all pros, and then they had an incredible organization structure and so on. But you know, your your or like when we talked to AOE and they had like not just good organizational structure internally and not just with the captain whose main job was telling people what to do and what not to yeah. do, but also like infrastructure organization where they could decide to go stealth or not stealth at the yeah. infrastructure level with one person's decision for an entire challenge and not yeah. rely on having to disseminate that information throughout a team, right? Those choices really, I think looks like it helped. Exactly. And, 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 you know, there are in our years with the stealth, uh, traffic and social, so to, for those unfamiliar, when we were uh, hosting DEF CON CTF in 2020 and 2021, mm -hmm. we had a concept of um, stealth traffic. Normally in DEF CON, you, uh, when you throw an exploit at another team, it ends up in uh, PCAPs uh, that that team can, can consume. And what that turns the game into oftentimes is a game of copying exploits. You can get shockingly um do shockingly well by by quickly copying efforts which is a skill mm -hmm. but it's uh also o o when overemphasized that it, it it has an impact on not the quite the same skill the as thing. finding a unique vulnerability and yeah. developing an exploit yourself <laughs> yeah and so balancing this is very tricky uh our solution um was uh, to have two endpoints for every challenge one endpoint would give you full points and end up um, on the in the PCAPs that mm -hmm. uh, the victim team receives. The other endpoint would give you half points, but not end up in the PCAPs. And, and yep. watching the teams come up with strategies for this and the effect, and we should really maybe do a deep dive into these data sets mm. somehow. Um, they're all public on uh, OOflow.io, but... Um, the really interesting thing was um, seeing teams that were too big and disorganized that they accidentally leaked an exploit. Right. And then suddenly right. seeing all the other teams have it, you know, 15 minutes later. Mm -hmm. um, versus AOE, as we just got, that, that did the decisions at the firewall. So they didn't leak these exploits. Yeah. They had yeah. secret exploits. They had public. It was uh, pretty. Oh, it was super cool to see like the third place team make the strategy decision to be like, or the they were the third one to the service. So they said, nope, we're just going to go full out for the points, get full points for those fifteen minutes until it leaks to everyone else. And that way, like because they knew they were already in behind, so if they only kept stealth, they would be behind those other two. So they were just like, let's just do it and yep. then make this make this be a mess. <laughs> yep.
Yep, yep. Yeah, because we had something where we divided the the points per round by the number of teams that got it, and so they're like, yeah, this is the main money maker for this other team. So let's sink them down. Yep, yeah, yep, it was, exactly. I mean, it, it it was very cool, but you know, with people comes that that need. Like, if you have fourteen people, or I think probably for modern CTF fourteen is low, but if you have you know twenty people. You you and 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 there are five challenges and there's four people working per challenge. You can tell three other people, hey, don't uh, <laughs> we're not doing on stealth or whatever right now. Right. right. But uh, the more you have, you know, it just gets too crazy. Um, that's just one example. But but I think again, you know, the the cost to to training up new people, well, at least with of one specific model of training maybe um mm-hmm. is, is not great um, yeah like i think it, it's important though i mean i don't know personally being the person that was uh let's say not like was new to defcon and ctfs and going into finals and not really knowing what to do but seeing what it was all about and just being in that environment like as long as i was not you know in the way and detrimental to things i think it was super uh mm-hmm. helpful for my own personal yeah. development because then you can literally see i mean looking even you know talking about now in shellfish we had people who in 2018 when we first hosted defcon helped us as uh like volunteers helping us set things up for DEFCON final, like they were not playing DEFCON uh, finals in 2018. They were like helping us uh, get coffee and food and they various weren't other yet things. Playing, uh, exactly, that's shellfish. what I mean. With shellfish, exactly. Now they weren't playing with shellfish, shellfish. Yeah. and now they're shellfish uh, captains who are running things and popping things and yeah. exploiting things. And so it's really interesting to me to see the new students now who are showing up but not really contributing a ton but are still there and i can see them look at those people like oh my god how will i ever be one of these gods that's like a captain and is poning stuff and i'm like yeah, this is how you do it you show up and then you get like uh you know you get into it and then you get better next year and then you show up again and then you do better and then in f- four or five years boom now you're the one popping stuff yeah 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 it's i mean there's two trajectories there's the the aces tra- trajectory where <laughs> this dude showed up to a, a hacking meeting, mm-hmm. didn't understand what is going on, left for oh, two weeks, aces, shows back aces. up. I thought you said aces, like the router maker. I was like, no, I don't know where no, this no. is going, but okay, yes. Aces, the, yes. Oh, the, that's the right. legendary hacker. <laughs> yes. Uh, so there's that meteoric rise. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there is the slow and steady, uh, you know, and, 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 and then points are often very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you flood the field with with a ton of pros um with these mergers then then you take away some of the ability development for the latter yeah. group to to yeah. ramp up and and i think it's uh uh i mean and maybe we can use this to zip over to another topic which is shellfish sure. specifically Do because it. this is uh shellfish's 20th DEFCON CTF qualification. The big two zero. Um, yeah, and it's 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 insane because no other team even comes close, right? Um, in the the number of 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 qualifications for DEFCON, there are teams that are conglomerations of teams that have you know, but but this is a bit of a of, of a unique situation, and I think one of the reasons for this is a. Uh, deeper um you know emphasis on on uh uh the exposure of everyone to 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 these crazy top ctfs defcon mm-hmm. etc i mean to the extent where after the cybergrand challenge shellfish was a millionaire team right because uh the cybergrand challenge came with a lot of prize money um and so we would just send people to every uh, every international CTF we could, and uh, including new people that mm-hmm. would get exposure to it, get would get amped up and 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 become then awesome uh, core hackers with, with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, so I don't know. I I, I was uh, hoping we'd chat about our sure. experiences. Let's of, do it. You know, 
shellfish uh, in, in the, the very old days. We talked a little bit about it mm -hmm. from um, our kind of CTF backstory and, uh, and, and so on. Um, but um, I guess uh, DEF CON Qualls is interesting for us because we met at DEF CON Qualls in 2009, it's right? meet cute or origin yeah, story exactly. or something, yeah. Yeah, so in 2009, DEF CON Qualls, uh, I showed up, I mean, this is in a, some previous episode somewhere, but just at a very high level. Um, Adam, you were doing your master's? Yeah, I was uh, in my master's. I had joined the lab at UCSB in the fourth year of my undergrad as a as a four plus one student. So I was doing four years of undergrad, one years of master's, and I had somehow convinced Giovanni to like take me on as a master's student. And so, uh, yeah, I was working in the lab. I had a desk uh, and everything. And I think I used one of those old, the, if you remember the Apple, was it the cinema display monitors that was in the lab? Like, it was like beautiful. Anyways, doesn't matter, but... The lab had this amazing ancient, um, uh, what was the the company that made the IRIX? Uh, you are uh, testing my knowledge, man. Was it sil Silicon Graphic SGI? Silicon uh, Graphics Incorporated? Yeah, I think that would make sense. Yeah, um, there was an uh, SGI uh, monitor um, that was like, I don't know. Ah, yeah, you're correct. I looked yeah. it up. Like, MIPS workstations and servers, man. They're yeah, ahead of their yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, typical, typical SGI. Anyways, I wonder if you were using that because that was on kind of the side of the lab where I think you were. Maybe sitting. actually, maybe it was that one. Maybe the cinema display somebody else was using. Yeah, that massive guy, right? Like, yeah. It, yeah, it, was, big, it was bigger it was like than a thick, head. like massive bezel. Yes. 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 So I, I then stole that monitor for my entire PhD. <laughs> Amazing. All right. And, well, then, me... and then fought when it was going to be like deeper vision than like whatever, like because it was ancient, but, but it was still a good monitor. Oh, SGI shame. made good. In high school, I, uh, for some reason, really wanted an SGI monitor. And they were like, you know, way more expensive than what was reasonable. Like, like, you oh, know, here, Apple let me send prices. you this. Uh, are you in the, the chat? Let me send you this. This is the picture of my monitor. You can tell if it was the. Oh, man, that's such a bad camera, though. Which oh the chat in oh, the sure. uh, oh. the thing that we're using to record the software. I th it's uh, just blurry me... enough. It's a 2009 yeah, really cell phone yeah, camera yeah. that it's hard to tell. Let me find. I'm sure that I have a picture of my monitor, and I'm I think so, but maybe because the the gray bezel looks looks familiar. This detour into uh, detour into uh, old monitors brought to you by monitors. Exactly. Buy a monitor today. Wow, here's a picture of Fish when he was like eight years old, basically. Okay, ah, I see. Google is struggling. All right, here we go. Nope, that's too far back. Almost. That's a picture of Alex's monitor when we uh, dolphined him. Are you just Googling for monitors or searching for monitors among your photos? Yeah. That's crazy. But, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to yield fruit. Will it? Almost. Almost. Aha. That is my monitor, man. Wow. Wow, no way. That's insane. Holy crazy. cow. We used the same monitors for years, folks. Didn't even know it. This Didn't... revelation brought to you by CTF Radio. Wow, my mind is blown right now. All right, yeah. Anyways, that so, monitor was incredible. 2009, you come. How did we even start talking about this monitor? Because I don't know. I thought. It, anyways, I started talking about it, and then you started talking about it. Yeah, yeah because I, I remember. I thought I remembered when like the first Apple uh, Cinema monitor mm -hmm. showed up in the lab. But this that monitor was on 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 equal footing. That. I think that monitor was a three thousand dollar monitor when it, when it was uh, it was it was expensive enough that it had its own uh, asset tag and uh, and it was like we can't get rid of this monitor very easily. Amazing. Uh, like, why would you want to? And be like, yeah, but the the bezel is like eight inches. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that bezel. <laughs> it's so funny. Amazing. Anyways, yeah. So so you were a master student. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I think we we basically. Uh, 
uh, there was another master student, Sean, who mm -hmm. later uh, was responsible for years and years of rock solid uh, infra at, at DEF CON Falls and Finals. Um, and uh, we had um, uh, we'd been friends for like, I don't know, seven or eight years at that point, me and Sean. And he invited mm -hmm. uh, me to come to Santa Barbara for DEF CON qualifiers. Um, and I never even... I mean, I never played a CTF. I knew about CTFs, and and again, this is in previous How? episodes. Uh, did you because know I, about CTFs? No, I did know about CTFs. Yeah, yeah, but, but I never played. I oh, um, I had been oh, going because to Def Con. You went to Def Con ah, since okay. Def Con nine. I know. Yeah. So since yeah. uh, so this was two thousand nine. My first Def Con was two thousand one. So I've been mm -hmm. going to Def Con for like eight years, and um, then Sean's like, "Hey, well, we we uh, we know." Uh, and actually, I, I'd, I'd even hung out a little bit at the previous DEF CON finals, I think, um, with the team, but I hadn't, you know, I hadn't played or anything. But then um, uh, Sean invites me over and I, I show up and suddenly we're, at the time, this was before um, um, dynamic scoring. So everything had, you know, and, uh, fixed points, fixed, fixed points uh, from 100 to 500 and we were doing re the 500 uh, point reverse engineering challenge mm -hmm. uh, and it was a uh, virtual machine that that was was pretty funky virtual machine where you received the assembler i think and you needed to i don't remember those details i, I just remember, remember going through each instruction and figuring out what it yeah, did I, and i remember you had a buy i think oh no, no i think you received the emulator and you had to create an i don't remember yeah i think you had but, to create a program in that but like it would just take it and run it so you had to create mm -hmm. a program that would read the flag for you and give it back or something like that well there was so there was definitely a, a, a it was a two-stage thing because at one point i oh. remember that it started sending us code that we had to emulate properly uh, huh. or maybe we had to anyways it was very very cool uh early virtual machine uh vming challenge uh and uh uh, uh yeah from my perspective i'm just working on this challenge and then uh you know i started working with bryce and then there's some other random dude and that turned out to be you and we solved the challenge yeah uh, three basically complete noobs right mm -hmm. uh or or close i guess you had prior experience uh, in CTFs, um, but my only prior experience was the uh, computer organization class at RPI. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, and why did we get on this topic? Uh, we were talking about our shellfish. We were talking about early shellfish stuff, 20 years That's of right. shellfish. Yeah. And so from there, right, um, for me, uh, it was such a, a, a stark difference from uh, kind of industry cybersecurity, which is where I was at the time, that uh, I just basically uprooted my entire life. I emailed Giovanni. I said, dude, I, I need to do grad school. Can I do a master's? And he said, no, but you can do a PhD. <laughs> and so then I just moved to Santa Barbara and, uh, uh, and, and did it. It was insane. That is crazy. Um, but 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 you know what what really struck me is every year shellfish approaches quals in this completely shellfish way that I'm very sure also happened when we were organizing and not playing. Um in that, you know, oh, it's quals tomorrow? Oh shit. Maybe you should have some snacks or where, where's everyone going to sit? What's going on? <laughs> where am I? You know, and, and then we just show up and uh, just, just do it. Right. It's, it's insane. And, uh, and what's also interesting to me is over the years, I, I think there's a strong, this conception that shellfish is the only team that, that hasn't been, you know, a result of mergers or acquisition stuff that is true to a much larger extent than any other team, but it's not quite mm -hmm. absolutely true right because you know uh, first of all uh the shellfish is 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 like you know like um uh a miasma spreading around the world right encompassing things uh it's definitely not how i'd phrase that but uh sure uh but you know 
shellfish has this this this, this birthing pool in and at UCSB, and then uh, UCSB kept shooting out hackers that mm-hmm. became professors around the world, et cetera, et cetera, and then started, you know, of course, wanted to keep hacking, and so then there was shellfish presence in Boston at uh, mm-hmm. suddenly and, and so on. And then, of course, we have the the whole shellfish history podcast and shellfish uh, people have given talks about shellfish history at, at various conferences that are on YouTube. Um, but uh, it's it's very interesting to me how despite growing this, this complete like, uh, you know, almost complete YOLO, uh, let's just do it attitude. It's a, cult- it's a culture, yeah. right? It's like, and I think it's in one of the th- ways it was nice because I never felt like it was like, oh, we have to qualify or everything's trash. Or when we qualified and went to finals, it's like, oh, we have to win. It was more like, well, let's go and have fun and play. And like, this is what we like doing. So let's just do it. We like, we don't yeah. have to feel the urge to to do all that stuff. Yeah, which is maybe a very, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, like, I, I don't think there's an NBA team that says, oh, you know, let's just have fun on, on the court. You know, that's... Well, maybe the, um, who's the, the, the Harlem Glo- Globetrotters? Uh, you don't know who they are? Okay, then it's... No, they're the guys that spin the ball. Yes, uh, yes. In, in Tucson, growing up, there was another, there was a Tucson local team that, that was like a trick team like that. I bet they have fun. But yeah, it, it is very much like a, a more of a, uh, hacker collective kind of a thing yeah which is which is very cool uh to me that's why you i mean honestly that's it definitely has its drawbacks uh we personally in the 20 years of qualifying have never won uh a defcon finals other people have like shellfish has but we personally have not but if it wasn't for that like welcoming big tent kind of culture yeah. you would not have like Oh, for it's not sure. like we would have just taken some random person if we were actually cared about winning. Like we probably would have asked Sean who the heck this guy was and said, "Like I don't even remember introductions. I don't even remember like <laughs> you, Sean, introducing you to anyone. You're just a guy who was there hacking on stuff, and that's yeah, how we met." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was running, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that that was wild because uh, also you know, Sean has very good sleep hygiene. Mm-hmm. Uh, with you know caveats that that's impossible during DEFCON finals but you know in, in general like at some point Sean's like hey Yad I'm gonna go home and go to sleep do you wanna go and like no I'll just stay I'll just here. sleep on the couch that's in this lab that I've never been to except for this weekend yeah. I wake up and Giovanni is standing there and he's like who are you <laughs> that was awesome that's fine uh, the, so uh, how many do you know how many DEFCON finals you personally have played in of those 20 years? Yeah, 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 this is a good question. So we can we can finger count. My daughter is getting to this stage now. So I'm very recently experienced with Wait, finger counting. Wait, is she really? Are you teaching yeah. her the German style? Or? No, that that is very smart. Uh, or, the, the best style is... Um, is So the, 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 the German style is actually what I learned in Russia, um, which... And I've since mostly, for, anyways, the, uh, um, I think the best style is binary because, you know, you can get really high numbers with 10 bits, but which I plan to teach her as early as possible. I taught my nephew, uh, base systems and so forth really early. And, and, and he was, this kid was, I don't remember, 11 or 12 and <laughs> It was uh, decoding ASCII, you know, verbally. Uh, like, hey, say, hey, George, zero one zero 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 one one one. And like, oh, that's. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, so I was there, two thousand nine, twenty ten, twenty eleven, twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That was nine years, and then we hosted for four, and then uh, ten years was last year, and then eleven years will be will be this next year. Oh man! So all for over half of Shellfish's qualifying lifetime, I think. Yeah, that's crazy. Actually, you may be up there. Uh, I mean, 
mean, obviously oh. Giovanni would be is going to be number one, yeah. mm-hmm. but and then Will probably Will WKR after that, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, it might be number three in terms of most. Yeah, most I'm like nowhere near as close because I I think twenty. I, I think I went 2009, although I don't know because I graduated at that point. So I don't know if I I would have had to fly to Vegas from Seattle. Like I don't know if I even went to finals that year. 2010 was I, I before I started. Once. I flew in once, but I think that was during my PhD when I was doing um, I see. Uh, an internship. An internship there, yeah. So, yeah, like, maybe. yeah, in 2010, I don't think I went because 2010 was the year I tried to play. I distinctly remember trying to play quals remotely, like from uh, while I was living in Seattle, and mm-hmm. it was so painful. I like did it for four hours and was like, this is awful. Like, I'm definitely not going to do this. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't think I would have gone to finals there, but I definitely went 2011, 12, 13. 2014 is when I graduated with my PhD, so I don't think I would have gone that summer. I don't know, maybe. Uh, were you guys? That was before CGC time, right? Yes, uh, functionally speaking. I mean, it, it, I think we were thinking about the CGC, but quals weren't until 2015. Yeah, so I think I may have gone then. That's a maybe. So that's like five, and then definitely 2015 and 2000. 2015 and 16 is when I was doing uh, Pwn Devils stuff, so we never qualified, and I don't, I don't think I went to finals. And then 2000, when was the CGC year? Is that 2016 or 2017? Mm-hmm. 16 was the finals. And then what was 2017? Uh, was the last year of legit BS. Uh huh. That was the I, year of clemency. Yeah, I wasn't there that year either, so <laughs> I'm only like five or six, I think. Nice, but that's probably. You know, I mean, it's like one PhD's worth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For most people. There's Dr. Uh, Dr. Hacker. Um, there was something very insightful that popped into my head, but then it mm. popped out. Yeah. Um, that's what so, I, ask, I say when I lose an idea, too. That, Where does right. that really great idea that no one will ever hear about go? Damn. Uh, the world's a worse place without that idea. Damn, it was really good. It's probably idea. based on something I said, man. It's basically yeah. my idea that then. Yeah, what did you York, say? Uh, Can you about, just like, say it all again? Not playing some years and like CGC. I asked about the CGC years, and I started another team, Pwn Devils. Um, it's gone. Damn. When did you graduate? 2017. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you joined us in 2017, man, and then you stupidly convinced me to do DefCon by in was, one year. That's that was absurd, insane. man. Yeah, that was a it was a rapid fall for, for for our group. For me, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh oh God. man, that was that was crazy. Organizing DevCon. Yeah. Um. Uh, anyways, the uh... damn Lance, really good idea. Really want to get to this idea. So. We uh, we started started playing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people playing. Lots of a lot people. of years. A lot of years. You're over half. Something of them. between that. It's a lot. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, I mean it is a lot, right? That's kind of why I think people. It's hard. I think it's been it's a lot easier now. I think to do remote collaboration and stuff, which makes actually to me makes a lot more sense of why teams are Start able merging, to yeah. to merge. Yeah. Because oh, that's interesting. Back in like 2010, doing that would be like impossible. Like, the, like mm-hmm. all you had was Skype, and it was kind of crap. <laughs> like now you have Discord. You can drop a ton of people on there. It's so easy to like collaborate and um, yeah. And it's not that you know Shellfish didn't have an IRC server. We did. Did um, we? I've never it, joined it. That's Shellfish IRC server. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shellfish got an IRC server that was like the Shellfish IRC server in. Um, I want to say 2013, 2014. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, some of the Boston guys hosted it. Uh, MW. I see. I see. Yeah, and we even had uh, one ICTF, or maybe two ICTFs. We had IRC challenges. They're very, very cool. It's like a, a an ancient dark art. I think that's what I was going to talk about. Like Shellfish asked this uh, crazy hacking collective, mm-hmm. right? Um, is very interesting to me because, um, of course growing up i mean even now you have these like mysterious hacking collectives some of them 
a uh, chaotic good, like let's say anonymous, it would probably mm-hmm. be classified as chaotic good, um, depending on who you talk depending to. Depending on that, but... let's say the act. Let's say the act. And the act. Right? The very, very chaotic. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, uh, and you have uh, people that may be individuals or may be collectives, like Phineas Fisher. You have uh, people that are uh, definitely like let's say Lulsec maybe was chaotic evil. I don't know. Um, and uh, then you have lawful evil, which are like the the you know this, uh, ransomware gangs. Um, you just that are have most these... definitely state run for those that don't know. Well, yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, no, that's no, why, I, that's why I know. I, that's why. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I understand why you're saying that. I'm just clarifying for the audience. Yeah, that was a, a lot of revelations around February uh, of last year. Yeah. Of what which what gangs were state run and what are weren't exactly. But, um, yeah, so uh, so lawful evil there, um, uh, and and it's just this fascinating view of, uh, especially growing up and kind of the the birth of of the the, the birth of actual cyberspace, mm-hmm. right? Um, it was yeah, like, very. You have like more of the artsy kind of like I don't know, cult of the dead cow kind of strikes me mm-hmm. as like a. Like a hacker collective, but also with a bent. Like a, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, maybe neutral good, maybe. Yeah. Then you have like people like the like Loft and stuff who was mm-hmm. like demonstrating real attacks and stuff to try to show people that like this stuff actually is real and like you should start taking like uh, interest in this, uh, yeah. like especially at the government level. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like all of these uh, Loft and, and and CDC and so forth. They were hacker groups, mysterious collectives first, and then, but but with a almost like a public good or a public impact or something mm-hmm. like a, like a philosophy, which is different than um, earlier certain other earlier hacker collectives like um, Legion of Doom and, mm-hmm. and Masters of Deception, right? Like the originals. Um, so. You know this, Adam, but maybe some of our, our, our sure. listeners don't. That last uh, semester, I or last semester, last year, last fall, I ran a, uh, a hacker history and culture course at ASU. Yep. Very cool. Um, I had this uh, challenge I set to myself: like, how do we get people into hacking earlier? Mm-hmm. Because right now at ASU, not like as babies. Exactly. Uh, well, I, actually, I do have this challenge to myself as well. It's it's very difficult because uh even three-year-olds don't have quite the attention span <laughs> to, to like start reverse engineering uh binaries but but you know I, i'm working on it but um the uh where where we directly operate is is you know freshman year of undergrad and up right mm-hmm. so how do you get people at that point to get into hacking of course right some people are already into it some people don't need you to to you know inspire them into hacking they they come in already with with tons of knowledge etc but the ones that don't what about the ones that you know have never thought don't, about don't yeah. know python don't know c yeah. you know don't know uh, in their freshman year how do you get them up to speed because the curriculum is very slow the curriculum doesn't optimize for undergrads playing ctfs at a world-class level mm-hmm. curriculum optimized by the time you graduate you should have some idea what you're doing enough to, you know, go and Get start a job. working. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you can't count on the curriculum to teach these people Python or C or assembly in mm-hmm. their first right. uh, semester of undergrad. And and by then, you, you, you're you now talking about the sophomore year or, or junior year, which is where our real cybersecurity curriculum begins. And too late. By the time that these kids are really elite, they're graduating. Yep. Right? And so we had built out at ASU um, collaboratively a really good pipeline where really by the time they graduate, they're, they're you know, have written complex kernel exploits, reverse engineered crazy virtual put together multiple uh, exploit, crazy exploit chains, et cetera. And, 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 and that's awesome. But how do we move that earlier? And I realized that what we need is a hacking class that doesn't require technical knowledge yet. Get people really excited, mm-hmm. get them passionate, and then they'll develop that technical knowledge. They'll dive in 
and and they'll keep pushing forward. So Fish and I, we ran a, a, a um, and actually Fish is an interesting uh, part of this too because he also is experiencing the trajectory of starting in as you know a top CTF player, and now he's on Nautilus Institute organizing and mm-hmm. and, and yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Fish and I uh, created uh, this course of, of, you know, a culture and, and history course about tracking. And for me, one of the, the real draws was conveying this wonder about the, these hacking groups and so mm-hmm. forth. Because from the outside, they seem so mysterious. Right. right? The, the Legion of Doom, the, the you know, the Loft, all of these, the, the CDC, uh, called that cow, not the... Uh, Center for Disease Control, although they're also mysterious, um, maybe. Um, the uh, you know they're, they're all so interesting, and in, in, you know, and 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 in this this uh, almost like a, like a romanticized uh, Wild West way. Mm-hmm. And what I realized partway through this class. Is shellfish is right up there, hmm. you know, and and this sounds insane for me to say even now. Like I, I say it, I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. What, Wait, can what? you actually uh, move your camera back because your head is getting too big to fit into the frame? <laughs> no, okay, okay, but it's not. You know, I, I think if you if you look at what separates the uh, like uh, loft or or or, or called the dead cow from. Um, Legion Shellfish. of Doom, which are... Oh. I thought that's where you are going. Okay, <laughs> or, keep going. No, no, no. Yeah. Or, 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 like, you know, they're, they are... Uh, they were these these groups, again, hacking groups primarily, but then with, with this philosophy driving mm-hmm. them. And, and Shellfish is a very interesting case because Shellfish is a, a crazy hacking group, but definitely on the lawful side. Mm-hmm. For right? sure. Um, but... Um, you know, you're like, oh shit, it's co-ops tomorrow. What the fuck are we doing? Where's my shellfish shirts? I gotta do laundry, sort of thing, right? Um, and then on the other hand, shellfish has had over the the decades, and that's also a crazy statement, yeah, to to be able to say, over the decades have had really measurable, significant impact on the. Um, uh, security space, mm-hmm. um, which is very cool to think about to the extent that I taught about shellfish in the module about hacking collectives to the students and, 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 and in a way that, that it actually made sense, which is crazy. It, it made sense to me even like, like even I don't do this often because it's scary, but I even looked at my, what I was saying from like an honest person, like a, you know, is this uh, is this like one of those professors where you take their class and then you have to buy at the bookstore their like own book that's like this exactly? Big. It's like sixty dollars. It's their own work that they could have just put on their website and had you download from there, but instead they made you go and buy it. Yeah, I've taken those classes, my friend. Yeah, exactly. This was this was it. We, we spent five weeks on shellfish. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> No, it was like 15 minutes. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, but it does, I mean, looking at it objectively, and I can say this objectively because I wasn't involved in these things, like the CGC, these are things that like is part of the lineage of shellfish. Yeah, it, it, that that's exactly. So um, I'm working on a, on a, a tweet thread. Um, I kind of... Uh, fall silent on Twitter uh, in, in, in previous recent months, but like... I'm gonna come back to uh, to to social media, and I'm working on a thread that will be a, a tweet thread and a toot thread, of course, at the same time. Wow. Um, uh, the biggest biggest hurdle is I just need to set up the cross poster. Oh, uh, yeah. I hate, I hate all of this this annoying stuff, like fighting with Linux for audio stuff, or 
that every time my friend is a lie you could actually use a real system you choose and then not only do you choose to use linux which is fine one thing you also do it on hard mode every single time we do this you're like oh wait i sandboxed my browser process from everything else it's running in individual docker containers let me have to go change that and figure that out like yeah. there's some stuff i mean you're you're now at this point man you're choosing to do these things you can't just say, oh, woe is me. How does all this Linux problems keep happening to me? Dude, I, I had an insane situation. Uh, so Adam and I, uh, you and I, are just uh, just now coming off of what, like three months of back-to-back -back deadlines or something? It's been it's crazy. Just, yeah. It's insane. And uh, I don't even remember which deadline. But at one point, uh, something crashed. I don't remember. It crashed hard enough that I'm like, fuck this, I'm rebooting my, my desktop. And the X doesn't come back up. And I spent three hours fighting with it. Apparently, some insane thing happened and apt went crazy and uninstalled my NVIDIA drivers and they wouldn't reinstall normally. And uh, it was just, it was insane. I was just constant stream of profanity, like, like a classic thing. This close, I was thinking, you know, those... Those Mac Studios, they do look kind of good. And you can run but, Linux on them now. It runs pretty well, I hear. At what cost? I saw he no, Linux, It's man. not the hardware that's the problem, man. It's, it's... It sounds like, well, that's true. I mean, it sounds like everything. Yeah. It sounds like everything is the problem. Uh, yeah, man, this the Apple stuff is nice. It works. The hardware just works. No, I, I can't do it. That's why I run I Linux know. on my phone. No, you do not. You're such a liar. I sent you the <laughs> you Pine imagine? Phone. I tried to get you the Pine Phone. You refused to get it. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, that, that would be amazing. Yeah, no, it would be so terrible. I'm sorry. My phone, my phone, my phone lost its, uh, its fucking modem drivers. All right. And, uh, okay, I think we're getting close to the uh, end. So do you have anything else more to say on No, the... wait, 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 wait. Yeah. yeah, so it's so on this thing. So so I, I was, for this thread, I was thinking, okay, well, what has Shellfish kind of accomplished? Right mm -hmm. um, in its 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 existence, and I I think you know it's, it's kind of a cliche thing to say, but you strive to leave the world better than how you found mm -hmm. it or whatever, right? But um, you know, so in in even since uh, in in kind of recent shellfish memory, there's been and and for shellfish impact is a little easier because of 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 our kind of semi academic nature too, right? We had anger the research mm. project we've had the entire cgc framework all of which we just open sourced the the, the next week um if you've had uh, uh our students creating amazing things like mahalo's making bin sync and and decomp to debug um we've had uh multiple uh people in uh shellfish kind of uh push forward with with Security education tools. We're talking about how to heap mm -hmm. is one example, right? It's just which is still remains. I don't know, five years, six years later, the the go to place for for understanding these heap techniques. We have, um, uh, you know, I'm not like I, I'm very proud of the team. I'm not trying to to brag here. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of other educational uh, uh, you uh, say techniques it, that the audience is just waiting to take a shot as soon as you say it. So, what phone college? Yes, exactly. <laughs> but it's not not even just phone college. Uh, even aside from college, it's like the ICTF framework, et cetera, et cetera right? But uh, yeah, it's um, it, it is pretty uh, pretty wild to me to see the amount <laughs> of of beyond just being a bunch of like a hacking rabble like right. shellfish sits down and like gets stuff you know out into the world which is super cool to me and it, it really has a little bit of like uh you know the flavor of the old greats which i'm very proud of um and cool. very very honored to be part of uh and it's interesting i wonder if, if if it is bound in 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 a kind of unremovable undivisible part to like going to defcon competing at defcon because you wouldn't think yeah. one is necessary for the other you know 
I think it is. I mean, the unifying force, like the thing holding shellfish together, basically, is CTF. I mean, I think that's what the... Without that, I think it would just kind of drift apart into... Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's that's what it that that's what it comes down to right and and it's in that sense it's an internal talent incubator mm -hmm. and crazy stuff incubator because it sounds insane to go fly to some far away country for a weekend to do you know ctf i had uh, at one point i remember sauls flew to korea slept in a in a uh ctf uh, organizer provided sleeping bag Okay, great. His entire time in Korea in the CTF space and then got on the plane and flew home after the CTF. Right? Like, and, we, and people don't do that for like a rec soccer league. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that that to me is very cool. I think it would be interesting to hear other teams' perspectives um, yeah, in a like similar that. way on, on, on what makes their team unique. Yeah. And I think we, we got there maybe with with shellfish, at least my perspective on what mm -hmm. makes shellfish unique, I think it's it's this, um, this this appetite for for positive impact beyond shellfish, um, uh, like the idea, and we don't have to, we can leave this as a mysterious mention, the shellfish open house. Ooh, unless you well, want to talk about it now. No, let's definitely not talk about it because we haven't decided anything. This is classic, Jan. <laughs> Yeah, it would be cool. Because He's just hoping of just, just talking just about it now. It. So that, yeah. you know, I have editorial powers over this. I can just cut uh, all of this out. Okay, but real quick, the open house no, is... stop. <laughs> <laughs> make, make the cutting job harder, right. man. Well, hopefully you didn't cut that. So that, actually, that, no, no, no. Talk about the, the one thing you can talk about is that time that you actually had like the CTF workshop. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that was very fun, too. Because I thought I, that was a bad idea. Well, I thought it was a bad idea for you to do it. I deliberately didn't go because that was, what, right before we were organizing our first year? Right before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't um, want to be seen as giving preference to anyone, so. Yeah. So, we, yeah, we were organizing uh, our first DEF CON finals. No, DEF CON quals. This was mm -hmm. right before quals because otherwise it would have been unlivable in, in Arizona um, to have a workshop. So it was right yeah. before quals probably about March or something. Um, we had, uh, uh, in 2018, one of our students, uh, Zweimer, decided to organize a workshop for CTF players to just come and talk CTF. Mm -hmm. And it just sounds insane, but we managed to get internal funding at ASU to fly a bunch of people from a bunch of That's CTF right. teams out. That's right. Um, there were even people there from international teams by accident because they were doing their internships uh, at they're doing internships at ASU. But um, but a lot of uh, American teams. We had PPP out, um, RPI Sec, uh, and two others. I don't remember, but I don't remember either. But it was. Uh, I mean, I have the the, the guest list somewhere, uh, and it was awesome. Everyone just came and gave talks uh shellfish obviously was another one um came and gave talks at uh, about ctf about uh different different stuff it was all like hey we'll invite the whole team we'll just chat we'll hang out we'll talk ctf and then every team puts together one presentation about something that they're interested in so mm -hmm. uh i if i remember correctly um one of our students uh Mahalos, he, he did a presentation about the impact of time zones on the performance of different teams, right? So, mm. and, and what is the most fair time zone in some sense to, uh, or, or, or uh, duration mm -hmm. to host a CTF. That was super fascinating. Um, you know, and, and then uh, I think uh, Amy from, from Itzen from uh, RPI Sec did a, a really cool talk about uh, browser exploitation, I think it was. Um, yeah, it was, it was very very interesting stuff stuff like that hasn't happened since or as far or, as i'm aware before. or it's happening and nobody's inviting us or or that yeah that's probably the likely scenario <laughs> like what, what? they happen constantly we're not invited um, to the sleepover but that's okay yeah we'll host our own competing sleepover that's the goal that's right that's right um so uh i think Let's say this. I think it would be cool if more mm -hmm. of this happened. I agree. Outside of just like the DEF CON after party. I think that's a good, is... yeah, that's a good way of going forward, right? I think with CTF Radio, we have the opportunity to reach out and try to involve 
get to know the teams and use this platform for that, which yeah. I think would be a great way to do that. Well, so so what I was thinking is, how cool would it be if we <laughs> didn't qualify for DEF CON and we could spend DEF CON going around and actually taping on location in the team's command suites and, and yeah. stuff. Uh, for, I'm, I'm sure that people probably trust us enough to be fair and impartial at this point after Hopefully. playing our games for four years. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that would have been very cool. Unfortunately, we qualified. Unfortunately, despite but, uh, our best efforts. Yeah. Turns out we still got it. That was awesome. Okay. Barely at the end, we kind of came through with a last minute third. That's classic. Four minutes to the end solve. I know. This is the other other classic shellfish thing. I mean, I I in in the in the quals that I've been involved with, uh, I don't know so many of them have like you know ten minutes beforehand, boom, and we're mm-hmm. we're, we're past the threshold. Um, this sort of stuff. Uh, it's, it's just I mean they're it, they're videos on YouTube, there's almost another situation like that last minute here, right? So after the the solve that qualified us, uh, Relmont and I, well, mostly her, I, 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 all I was doing was copying, pasting things between uh, terminals uh, at that point. But uh, it was a timing attack. I mm-hmm. was leaking out yeah. the password for opacity byte by byte, but something got messed up. We yeah. had a password, worked locally, didn't work locally. It happens, um, but it was it was similar. Like I was like, three F, three F. <laughs> okay, amazing. Four A. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I really, really enjoyed that call. So I guess we we can we probably need to wrap this up. But um, can't talk forever. We gotta save some stuff for the next podcast. You know. Yeah, I. For me, that clause was a bit of a return to form. Yeah, that was, it was very good. fun. It was I, a lot of fun, man. For me, uh, like, my, yeah, return yeah. to form for me personally. <laughs> I, I feel like I finally uh, recovered from uh, my self-induced CTF vacation. But yeah, maybe that's I mean, a topic host, for another time. Hosting and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think there's interesting stuff about, you know, especially somebody like you who's been doing it for a decade of playing CTFs, right? We could eventually in the future, not now, talk about uh, how to maintain that, right? Because yeah. we say that's the problem. So if the if there is a half that would be an amazing idea for an episode, right? Get the yeah. old farts. Me, yeah. Giovanni, Chris Eagle. Mm, that's pretty good. Wow, um, I'm, I'm sure they'll love what you just called them. So, all right, before I you do any more further further damage, <laughs> let's uh, let's end here. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, I'm Adam D. Uh, do you want to do the Twitter stuff, man? You know, what? we'll just do a new outro later, but. Uh, This is CTF Radio, so we are out. Say bye, Jan. See you later, everybody. You didn't say bye, Jan. Bye, Jan.